Good morning, Redeemer Church family. Once again, we say to God be the glory for allowing us to stand here this morning and reveal our Sunday school lesson or go through our Sunday school lesson once more. Uh, we hope that everyone is doing well and we hope that you all are continuing with your lesson, reading them and studying them just as if you were here at church on Sunday morning. We are still in the book of Genesis and we are still studying love. Um, last Sunday, our subject was victorious love. Today, our lesson is revealed love. Love that shows, love that you cannot hide, love that everyone can see that it's in you. Our lesson is taken from Genesis, the 45th chapter, verse 1 through 8 and verse 10 through 15. And last week, we left you with Joseph's brothers, Jacob's sons, leaving Egypt with the food that they needed that, or the food that they came to buy. And um, Joseph told them that he wanted them to return and bring their brother, their baby brother with them. Knowing that this would hurt Jacob, it was sort of, it was sort of hard for them to go back and tell their father what happened. But when they got back home and opening their food or opening their sacks, each one found their money in their sacks. And this disturbed them because they would say that the governor probably thought we were stealing from them. But they know, know that they weren't stealing. They paid, but Joseph told the steward to put their money back in their sack and give them the food they need. After returning home, this is where our lesson starts this morning. After returning home to their father, they revealed everything that happened to them while they were in Egypt. They revealed how, they, they called them the man, but I'm, I'm going to say the governor. They told them how the governor treat them. He didn't treat them well, and he talked to them in a rough way. And the governor gave them what they needed, but he said that they were spies. And, but they had to prove themselves that they were not spies. One of the brothers said that, no, we are not spies. We are all one man's son. One of our brothers is home with our father and one is not. Joseph knew that they were telling the truth, but they had to prove themselves. So he sent them back with, with the food that they had, but he kept Simeon so the brothers would return. After returning home and telling their father everything that had happened, that we have to go back and we have to take Benjamin. Jacob did not like this. He said, no, I've already lost Joseph. I can't lose Benjamin too. But, but um, Judah, the second brother, the second oldest son said, let the lad go daddy. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing, let the lad go back. I'll be personally in charge for his safety and I will bring him back to you. So Jacob thought about it. The food that they had gotten had already gone, so they had to go back to Egypt to get food. So they went, when Judah asked to let the lad go and he would be personally in charge of his safety, Jacob said, okay. They returned back to Egypt. And when they got back to Egypt, Joseph, fed them, had like a dinner with them, and by this time he had released Simeon with them so all the brothers could be together. And they brought Benjamin. Joseph did not reveal himself yet. He gave them the food that they wanted, but this time it was almost like a trickery. And trickery runs in this family. You know, Rachel, not Rachel, Rebecca, she was a trickery. His father, he was a trickery. <laughs> All, it runs in the family. So now Joseph is gonna play a trick on them. He said, now you can go. But he told his steward to put his silver cup in Benjamin's bag. And after they left, he sent 
his men behind them to catch them. And when the men got up to them and caught them, and look in Benjamin's sack, the silver cup was there. Now the, the fellows didn't know what, what to do. The brothers didn't know what to do. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? Now the man or the governor is going to think that we were trying to steal. Their money was also in their sack also. So they brought them back, and Judah gave this heart, felt story about our father. We've done wrong. We have sinned against, against our brother. We've done wrong. And now if we, um, Joseph told him that Benjamin had to stay in Egypt. And he said, now if you keep him, it's going to make our father hasten his death because he loved Joseph and he loved Benjamin and I am I am saying this it, it doesn't say it in the, in the our lesson but Jacob think of him he loved Re Rachel Rachel had died giving birth to Benjamin Joseph he thought was dead now you want to take my baby boy away from me this would have killed him and Judah gave this heartwarming, heartfelt story, and our lesson starts here. Revealed identity. After Judah have got, have, had given Joseph this story and tell him all about his father and, and what happened and what they did, Joseph could not retain himself. He stood and he cried. Last Sunday, there was a story, a little story in our lesson said, big boys don't cry. But I said, big boys don't cry, but big men's do. And Joseph cried. He cried so much that the whole house, Pharaoh's whole house, heard him crying. And this was not no wimpy, wimpy cry. This was the big boo-hoo cry. The one that you cry tell you, <laughs> you can't even talk. <laughs> and he did that, but, but before he did that, he sent all the men, the Egyptians, away from him because he did not want them to see him cry. He was the governor. And if you see the governor crying like that, what are they going to think? But they heard him crying. And he cried, he cried so much that all of them heard him, and he revealed to him his brothers, I am Joseph. And they were puzzled. They were troubled because they knew Joseph was dead or they didn't thought they would ever see Joseph again, but he said, I am Joseph. And he hugged them and he kissed them. And the first thing that he wanted to know, does my father still live? They told me, yes, your father still is alive. And this is Benjamin right here, your baby brother. Now, here is the time or here is a chance for Joseph to get even. Joseph was in charge of anything he want done could have been done. He could have killed his brothers. He could have put them all in a pit. Or he could have sell them all to the Ish Ishmaelites. But he did not. He revealed his love that he had for his brothers. He wanted them to go get their father, bring him back and all of us could live happily together. What the devil meant for evil, God turned it into good. And this is what Joseph said at the end of his life. What you meant, you meant to hurt me, but God turned it into good. He told his brothers, don't be angry with yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. You did not put me here, but it was God. Look at God. Look at God. You didn't send me here. God sent me here to, pervert, to, to, per, to preserve life for many. And this is what Joseph told his brothers. And you can also see God, Jesus in the life of Joseph. Jo the brothers thought that he was dead. Jesus died for us. Joseph could have done anything he wanted to his brothers, but he didn't. He forgave them. Jesus forgave us for our sins, 
look what we done to him. We killed him. But he forgave us. If it wasn't for Jesus, we would not have eternal life. So I can see a lot of Jesus in Joseph's life. Um, Jesus, Joseph was raised from slavery to governor of Egypt. Christ was raised from the dead, and he went home to be with God in all his glory. And all I can say is just look at God. God does what he wants the way he wants it done, and he does it with whoever he wants it to be done with. Um, we, and I said this last week, but this is how the, the Israelites got into Egypt, through Joseph. Joseph brought his father, his father's household, all that his father had, and he wanted them to live in Egypt. But he gave them a, a place called Goshen. Goshen. That's where the Egyptians, that's where the Israelites lived after they came to Egypt. And they lived there for 400 years, and God did another revealing love when he revealed Moses to them, and Moses brought them out of Egypt to the land that God had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All things work together for good to those that love the Lord. You might look at Joseph's life and say, boy, he had a rough life. Oh, look what they done to him. Look how they treat him. Look how Jacob, look what Jacob did, did to his sons. Look what Rebecca did to, to her son. But all of this was God's plan. All of this, when God was talking to Abraham and when God told Abraham what was going to happen to him with being a father of many nations, one thing he said to Abraham, but your people, but my people will be in slavery or in a land that is not theirs for 400 years. And the Israelites were in, in Egypt for 400 years. And God said, this is enough. I heard you cry and I'm going to bring you out victoriously. And he did that th through Moses. Joseph, when he revealed himself to his brothers and he told his brothers what he wanted to do, he fell upon their necks and he cried and he kissed them all. And he told them to go back and get my father. Now, it was going to be hard for Jacob to leave Canaan because this is, this is his home. This is where he, raised, he was raising his family. But... Like I said, God does what he wants and who he wants to do it with. So the brothers had to convince Jacob to come to, to Egypt. They had to tell him that your son, Joseph, is alive. He's the governor of Egypt. And look at the glory of what he has. Joseph was at the point that he was an Israelite. I mean, he was an Egyptian. He dressed like the Egyptians, he acted like the Egyptians, but he did not forget what he was taught as a young lad. He did not forget the grace of God and he did not forget his faith. He remembered what his father had told him. So for us today, the life of Joseph is a good lesson for us. And it's a lesson of love, it's a lesson of repentance, it's a lesson of forgiveness, and it's a lesson to show us we should not be favoritism when it, we should not show favoritism when it comes to our children, not only our children, but anyone. You know, sometimes we do have one that can do better than the other, or we have one that we called on more than the other because that one might be the faster one, or the one over here might be the one that can do this and this one can do that. But if you, if you do have favoritism within your children, don't show it. Don't show it openly. And I'm quite sure this is how Jacob was. Um, Joseph and Benjamin, I, I'm, I am assuming that they were always around their father, and their father was always talking to him, them, 
praising them for what they did, but the other brothers saw it, and it hurts. Favoritism hurts. So for us, let's not show favoritism toward our children or anyone else. When it comes to God, he loves us all equally. Our prayer for this morning says, Father, thank you for revealing your loving forgiveness to us through Jesus' death and resurrection. Help us to forgive others as we have been forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. And our thought to remember is God has revealed his love to us. Are we revealing it to others? Revealing love. Love that you show. Love that you don't hide. It's nothing wrong with saying I love you. And I know that's hard for some people. But God loves us and he shows us that every day. Every day that we open our eyes, God is showing us I love you. Every day that we have food to eat, God is showing us that he loves us. Every day that we are healthy or we can get up and we can do for ourselves, God is showing us that, I, that he loves us. He reveals us his love to us through nature also. The stars, the sky, the, the plants, the trees. God reveals his love to us every day. Are we seeing it? Are we seeing it? Look at God. In the life of Joseph, all I can tell you is to look at God. I see God and Jesus in the life of Joseph. I'm encouraging you to please continue to read your lessons, continue to study, continue to pray for our Sunday school, continue to pray for our church until we get back together. We are not together physically, but spiritually, I hope we are all on the same page. And I'm going to say again, I have the books. If you have not gotten a book, please see me and the books are here. But we, we encourage you to continue to read your lessons, continue to study. And I also encourage you to finish the, the book of Genesis. Finish read the, the, the whole book. From, four, from the 45th chapter and see what happened to Joseph and Jacob and the other brothers. It's a good story. And like I, like I said, to God be the glory and God is revealing his love to us every day. Thank you. Until next time, God bless you and I love you all.